doing with this program is trying to help mushers, pet owners, ski jars, and other recreational trail users to coexist with trappers on the public lands and trails. If you're of a mind that trapping is just a nasty business and has no place in modern society, we are not here to try and change your mind. Because no matter what laws and ordinances our government passes, there will always be irresponsible pet owners and irresponsible trappers. And when these two lower life forms clash, unfortunately, we end up with dogs in traps or snares. We all want to avoid that. I'm Pete Bust with the Alaska Trappers Association. I've trapped for over 40 years, primarily in interior Alaska. My main trap line is on the Tanana Flats, far from town. I've also trapped closer to town. I've caught fox and coyote and mink within just a few miles of Fairbanks. I love dogs. I've always had house dogs, and for about 20 years I used sled dogs for recreation and for trap line transportation. I'm also the son of a veterinarian. My mom, Jean Bust, worked on the Yukon Quest as a pre-race vet and at several of the checkpoints on the Quest. And in the course of working in her clinic over the years, I've learned a lot about handling injured and scared dogs. Make no mistake about it, having a dog caught in a trap is a royal pain for everyone, including the trapper. A trap with a dog in it obviously is not going to catch a valuable fur bearer. The set area cannot be readily reused. The trap must be cleaned and treated before it can be used again. Often the trapper gets bitten trying to release the dog. There's potential liability, and I'm talking about financial liability to the trapper, not just the chance that the poor dog will contract something from biting the trapper. And at least once a year, the local newspapers seem compelled to feature a story and a photo of a poor trapped dog on the front page. It's the trapper who comes out looking badly, and that's all trappers, not just the one that set that particular trap. So it's not hard to see that trappers definitely do not want to catch dogs, and dogs will get caught, and that a lot of phone calls will be made to fish and game, municipal animal control agencies, the troopers, and the media. It's not a good situation for anyone, least of all the poor dog involved. In this video, we want to do the following things. We'll show you how in the course of being outdoors with dogs, you can have a better idea of when you might be on a trap line or in an area where there are traps or snares. We'll discuss what trapping sites for the various common Alaskan fur bearers look like. We'll look at some different types of common traps and snares and how they're fastened or secured. We'll discuss subduing and handling trapped dogs and we'll learn how to release or open the different types of traps and snares.